Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Kirsten Hunter and I'm here, uh, this is Psych in Your Car and I'm here to share psychology with you. I've been a psychologist for 22 years and I'm extremely passionate about getting this information out there to everybody. So, my child thinks they're fat. This is huge. I have children as young as six who come in and who have body image issues. It's extremely sad and, and very concerning. Um, and we need to become very educated with regard to what to do to pre prevent body image issues and eating disorders. I mean, if we have one gift we want for our children, it's confidence. And we want them to learn to value who they are rather than to learn that they need to be a product for other people's approval. It's enormous. So I've got a few thoughts to share with you. First of all, I must admit I'm talking more about girls than boys. Um, of course, it, it's very relevant to boys. I just see it with girls a lot. Um, first of all, uh, how does this happen? When the research is very clear, it says that when little girls come along, we say, oh, isn't she beautiful? And with boys, we say, isn't he clever? So we're already getting this social dialogue going and it's a problem. So when we're giving feedback to children, yeah, praise that they're gorgeous, no problem. But how's that in amongst how how clever they are and how loving they are and how kind they are and how mindful they are and give them all these other beautiful adjectives that actually say that they're a good person and to help them with that self-talk that they're going to develop. Don't just stick with attraction. That's very important. Um, secondly, girls. Um, I have parents that dress their girls like little dolls and then they get attraction, um, attention from that all the time and then the parents are upset that the children are thinking of themselves as little dolls. So no problem with dressing up, of course, but, you know, keep it in perspective. Let the child just be a, a you know, a messy child and to not always be so preened and proper for everybody where they think they have to be this product for society. So be mindful of that. It's extremely important. Um, okay. Um, parents, boom, we have enormous modeling. Children basically learn how do they feel about themselves, their body, how do they feel about the world based on what the parents are saying with their experience, so modeling. So if the, the, if the parent is doing something with their diet, don't ever let the child know. Don't talk about it in, in the kitchen, in the lounge room, the living area. Don't let the child hear what the parent is doing or you know if the parent's saying oh gee my ass looks so big <laughs> which is good these days which is great um, or you know oh, I just can't wear this dress or I just feel disgusting or you know um, any of this sort of language the self-loathing language the child starts to learn wow if you have extra cuddliness on you then then you're you're a failure so don't share your insecurities with the child also when the parent is doing exercise wonderful um, but but model that as in I love exercise I'm going out because I really enjoy it it's good for my body don't say you know if I don't then you know it's it's the end of the world because I'm going to be xyz all sorts of negative self um, talk you know language that we just don't want the child to be hearing so be very mindful of modeling you're modeling for the child how you want them to view themselves in the future and can I say that parents get this wrong all the time and they're just not aware it's it's um it's so um second nature I guess to have all of that negative self-talk um the other issue we've got as well is um keep an eye out with early teenagers if you're hearing the child becoming really consumed by their image or they're doing restraint with regard to food which is not realistic as in you know um it, it's, it's not just being healthy, but they're starting to become quite fearful, then please get professional help because this, this is a landslide. It's really dangerous. Um, if you don't want the child to wear certain clothes, don't have it in the house. I have all these parents that, um, you know, I don't like when my child wears X, Y, and Z, and I'm saying, well, where did they get it from? Well, they were given it by some auntie and don't have it in the house for the child to reach for, quite simply. You've got the parental control, so use it. Um, if you don't want the child to be eating junk food and you're wanting them to have a healthy approach um, because you're wanting them to you know, take on those habits, don't have an unhealthy food in the house, but have it when you go out. So, you know, a lot of parents will say, well, 
you know, we like to eat the unhealthy food. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it under the child's nose and not want the child to eat it. And, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing wrong with children having unhealthy food. It just has to be in moderation, of course. And that just is a dangerous cycle, all of that. Um, yes, um, I, I think that it's um, really also just one final point. Um, be mindful of other people that the children have contact with. So if we have got a grandmother who has had a long history of an eating disorder, alert, alert, you know, really, really um, dangerous territory there because, you know, grandma might, with a good heart, um, accidentally be modelling a lot of negative, um, very toxic self-talk. If there is a, um, you know, an uncle who makes sexist comments and, and sexualizes women, then the child is hearing these messages that that's where her value lies at a very young age. Um, just be very mindful. You can't control everything, but try to try, try to just navigate that. It's very difficult. So welcome to our modern world and our current challenges. Obviously, we've got social media, we've got um, music clips, we've got movies. Um, all these images are coming to the child's world. So try really hard to, um, you know, just keep it G-rated, you know. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming. And if you want to catch me, um, my website is kirstenhunterauthor.com and uh, Facebook and Instagram, Kirsten Hunter Author, Twitter, Kirsten Hunter AU. Obviously, I've got the Signposts for Living books, which go through 205 psychology areas, making psychology relatable and trying to share it with the public. So thanks. I'll catch you later.